micro lesson today is how to deepen a character. Um, last week we talked about how to deepen a situation and we went through the choices that Chekhov made in Oysters, um, his short story Oysters, and we saw how he had chosen characters who were begging on the streets of Moscow. They were very poor, no food, um, and not only that, but they were so hungry that they were going into a fever. They, they were at the very extreme of um, survival. So that was an example of depth in the situation. Today we're talking about depth in character. And just to clarify, depth is the quality of being intense or extreme. It's the measure of how deep something goes. Um, and sometimes, you know, for writers, we come to a story um, from different angles at different times. So sometimes it might be a situation that makes us want to write the story, or sometimes it might be the character. So, um, you know, it could be that a character has given you the whole impetus for a story, and you might have imagined a person with a problem, and you might want to fix it for them, or you might not want to fix it for them. You might want to simply illuminate the nature of their problem, or maybe you're going to have, maybe your intention is to have it move forward and end in an ambiguous or a bittersweet way. Those are, those are some of the choices. Um, so sometimes we write something and it might feel quite slight. It's got a character in it, but we don't know where we were going with it. We, we didn't complete it. With those stories, um, one thing you can do is you can look at the person you've put on the page and you could ask yourself the question, can I give this character more of a backstory? Can I give them more of an emotional life than I have done to turn this into something that I can finish and edit and then send out for publication? Um, and so what you can do, um, if you're writing a novel, you know, there are many teachers talk about, Lisa Cron talks about the emotional wound, uh, the emotional floor, so does John Truby, you know, these, these are people who talk about having a character who has an origin story. So the origin story is the beginning of that problem. So if, for example, you have a character who doesn't believe that they are worthy of love, then you would go back to the first time they concluded that and that would be your origin story. So, um, for example, if you have a young adult who is um, being you know, self-abusive or they're acting out, perhaps it's because they don't feel that they're worthy of their own good treatment or good treatment from other people. So you would ask yourself the question, why? Who treated them in a way that made them feel as if they didn't matter? Was it a parent? Was it an older sibling? Was it a, an important teacher at school? Um, you know, sometimes it's the nuns in, in Catholic school, you know, sort of especially pre-Vatican II. Um, so your origin story is that time when they first concluded that they were not, that their misbelief, they, they internalized something that wasn't true. And then over the course of your story, particularly if you're writing a novel or a novella or even a long short story, you may show us the scenes that they go through, the, the obstacles that they overcome, and that by the end of that, they may well turn that misbelief on its head and they may well come to see that they are actually worth treating well, that they are worth love. That doesn't necessarily mean they change their whole lifestyle. Not everybody, not everything would change necessarily, but just that one insight might be enough to turn the misbelief on its head. So um, an example of a misbelief is in a story that I sent out in my newsletter recently, um, a Chekhov story, which is one of my, my, long, my favorite, favorite stories, is Vanka. And this is the story of an eight-year-old boy who's been sold into servitude. Um, he's obviously, you know, they're very poor, and I, I'm sure we don't get to find out about the family, but I'm sure that they, they had no choice. They, 
probably had no food. And it's Christmas and Vanka, it's late. He's exhausted from working all day, this little eight-year-old boy. And he writes a letter to his grandfather, believing that once he, his grandfather receives this letter, he'll come and rescue him. And the story ends, this is a spoiler, so I'm sorry about that. Um, the story ends with Vanka going to the post box to post the letter. And of course the reader knows that Vanka is under a misbelief. This letter is not going to get him rescued. Um, and he doesn't know that. We know that as, as the writer, so that as the reader. So that's a story where the misbelief, we don't see the character actually come to understand that they have a misbelief, but we the reader get that it's a misbelief and that's how it ends. It's it's kind of grueling. It's a grueling short story, but the light in it is the fact that the character is so optimistic about his chances for being saved that you get the sense that this is a character. He's taking action on his own behalf. He's going to be able, he's going to be okay. You know, he's going to be able to to get through it. Um, you know, we never we don't find out. So that's an example of a misbelief that does not get, we don't see it get turned over. And in your story, you might choose to show the reader how the misbelief is realized and how, or you might not. Um, and so that's up to you. And so why do stories contain false beliefs? The reason that stories contain false beliefs is because Readers read for many different reasons, but one of the primary reasons is because we want to understand how to handle life better. And so when we read about characters who have a problem, who have a misbelief, we want to see what they're going to do. We want to understand why they do it, and it will give us insight into handling life ourselves. Um, so a second example of a character with depth is in the short story um, The Student by Chekhov. It's in the public domain, so even if you didn't get my newsletter, um, which is at tessasmithmcgovern.com under the newsletter tab, you can still find this story. Um, it's quite short. Um, in that story, what happens is the character has a misbelief because he's judging the two widows that he meets in the story. He's judging them for not being, for all kinds of different reasons. So he's isolated, he's judgmental, he's disconnected from them. And by the end of the story, it's, it's a delicate and quite lovely um, progression. You get to experience his thinking, you see what his thoughts are, and you almost can feel the character's uplift from his thoughts, you can feel the, the his mood change, and, and it's a total 180 from the beginning of the story, so it's beautifully done. Um, and by the end, he has stopped judging them, and he is not, he's understand, <coughs> excuse me, he's understanding that they are connected, and he sees his humanity that's connected to them. And it's really um, a delightful story. It's easy to read, it's quick, um, and that's how his, you know, Chekhov shows us that his misbelief that they are less than him and that they're not connected is solved. So that's an example of um, a, another misbelief. And on the second page of the download that I have for this, um, and I'm going to put it in the chat in just a second, um, you can ask yourself these questions. The first question is, how can you apply depth to a character that you've already started writing about? And you, would, you could add depth by adding a misbelief. And then the second question you can ask yourself is when you're thinking about a new character, what character misbeliefs do you find engaging? I mean, I found that Chekhov, the way he managed to connect that character um, was just beautiful. And so for me, that's a misbelief that I would start to think about and I would, I would think about it so deeply. I don't know how it's going to pop out in my writing, but I'm 
pretty confident that sooner or later it's going to pop out in some way because I'm so I'm dwelling on it and thinking about it. So for you, the question is what misbeliefs are really engaging to you? What makes you stop and go, wow? And those are the things that, you know, this is part of your sensibility, your um, voice as an artist. That's the things that engage you and grab you. So that is how to add some depth to a character.